You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. It is eight minutes after 12 bells on a Friday. Everyone's happy, yay. And uh, it's a gorgeous day. I think it's National Morons Day today. Driving car, National Moron Day cars. Oh, my God. Every jerk is out there this morning. Normally, it's you get a few. But I, w I went through like, an, uh, what do they call it when you have to go through a, uh, you know, Oh, come on, help me. When you have to go through a thing, a gauntlet. It was like a gauntlet to get here. The one thing about driving a motorbike is you definitely got your attention going. The opposite to people in four wheels. I'm tired of moaning about it, but I just have to vent a little bit because it's just out of control, man. <laughs> out of control. We're here with Billy Gibbons and Matt Sorum. How are you? Hey Jonesy. Hey baby. I was out with dinner, out to dinner last night with Billy. Yeah. And we had a little meal. And he says, "I'm gonna pick you up at 11:15." Mm -hmm. I say, "Okay. Uh, where are we going?" He says, "Oh, that you know, I'll let you know." And we get in the car. We go get a coffee. I get a nitro. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we pull up in front of KLOS. He says, "We're gonna go see Jonesy." And even you didn't know we were coming. I had no clue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, Steve. So welcome. Well, what what, what are. are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It, it, I'm just glad we didn't have a guest on. And that would have been no. weird. You would have had to bump him because Billy Gibbons is here. <laughs> Probably. If it was someone too, Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moron day. If it was moron day, might as well, you know. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. good. It was a nice surprise. Nice surprise. Yeah, I learned the gauntlet. I, I'd, yeah, usually it's like the traffic island. Maybe you go around that thing. Yeah, like Ben Hur. Yeah. <laughs> and you're up on that big. Where do you have a BMW? What is the motorcycle? I've got. I've got that one today. Yeah. That's higher, isn't it? It is higher. So you can kind of be up above it because when you're on a smaller bike, it's command weird, right? command seating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I um. Yeah. yeah. The, the the hog. I got me a uh, Road King that's low, but the my, the BMW, the Mega Motor HP2 is is me workhorse. That's the one I just you know zoom around on all day long. It never never breaks down. They're nice. great motors, you know. They don't have a chain uh, drive. It's a shaft drive, and it's it's a workhorse. They're fantastic, and I've customized mine. Beefy yeah. and chewy. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. You remember man. when we used to ride the big, the big Harleys? Though you know, when you when you're riding on the street, you could give them a boom, boom, boom. You know, to let them know you're coming. Sure. And I had I had two inch drag pipes on my bike. I had a sixty one pan shovel. Yeah. And you could really light them up. Like uh, I'd set off car alarms yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know? I like going past the ones who are texting with their windows down. Yeah. And I come <laughs> right alongside them and go, BOOM! <laughs> <laughs> and we're the, the, you know, those sounds, I hear those sounds now. Oh, look at that jerk on that loud bike, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah. All good. What's going on with you, Billy? Well, we're getting ready to go out. Uh, we got some Texas dates with the ZZ Top boys. We're going to hit it in. Uh, Texas three dates. We go in Dallas, Houston, Austin, Texas. Then off to Europe. And uh, lo and behold, I was looking at the schedule. Matt and his new outfit, Deadland Ritual. I mean, we're talking dark. That's with uh, Geezer Butler. Geezer Butler from Black Sabbath. I got him out of retirement. Who else? Steve Stevens? Steve Stevens and our friend Frankie Perez. He's singing? Yeah. He's doing all the vocals. Great Frankie. singer. Yeah. He's so ZZ Top and Deadland Ritual collide in France for Hellfest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're on a few. We're on Sweden Rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Land of Vikings Festival. Ain't you kind of Swedish? I'm a Norwegian. No if you told my grandmother that, she would smack you. Well, they ain't the same. It's all, it's all Nordic <laughs> no. over that. No, my grandmother used to say, one Norwegian chased a thousand Swedes through the woods. Uh, the the boing, the boing, the boing, the the boing, 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 the See, in those days, they, they'd name their kids like after 
you know, eagles or like a be eagle suit them or like something. But, you know. oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sorum sorum actually means South Sand. So that's surf language in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Norwegian. Norwegian. Nor oh, excuse me. Yeah. 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 Nor Nor so besides AHA, I'm probably the most famous musician ever come out of Norway. Yeah. Yeah. That was the only thing <laughs> to come out of Norway. <laughs> yeah. You know what I started watching last night? Yeah. Because he was on the show yesterday, yeah. little Stephen Van Zandt. Right. Uh, uh, Lily Hammer. Oh, I haven't seen it. It's in Norway. And he's it's a TV, it's a Netflix series. Is it and cool? he's, he's the lead on it. He's like playing his typical oh. soprano character. Yeah. But he moves to, to this place, Lily Hammer, in Norway. Oh, great. It's, it, it's bizarre. It's all it's snow. It's just snow yeah. in every shot. You like it? It's, it's bizarre and it's funny. <laughs> okay. I'll yeah. check it out. Yes, yeah, as good as Norton in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's good, man. I saw I saw your missus. Uh, uh, was it Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday was. At Book Soup. Yeah. And she said, why don't you have Billy on the show? I said, I want to have him on the show. Well, and I, yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Gilly was uh, kind enough to wake me up this morning. She goes, oh, uh, you better get moving. Uh, you're going to see <laughs> Steve. And not only did I not know it, Steve Jones didn't know it. Matt Sorm didn't know it. None of us knew it, but here we is. I like it. I like that when that kind of stuff happens. Rock and, rock and roll. It's called rock and roll, baby. <laughs> so that's cool, man. Um, I, sp I spoke to um, little Steve about this, and I wondered if... Do you watch Netflix? Mm-hmm. Cause you're, a, would you say you're a blues guy? Oh, yeah. Let's as a platform to launch from. Yeah, safe to say. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen that documentary on uh, Eric Johnson on there on Netflix? It's a new. It's a new. It's fair. Yeah, I think it's new. Robert Johnson. Robert. Sorry, Robert. Eric, who believe now is Eric's the younger version, but he's white as well. I believe. Have you seen? Have you seen that? <laughs> I was talking about it yesterday, and somebody said you you got to tune in. Yeah, Irving Azoff, I think, produced. Oh yeah, yeah, Robert Johnson. Yeah, what you what did you what was your feelings about him? Was he the first kind of? What do you think? Well, thanks to the the English that you know the blues, this great American art form was on its way out. It was a vanishing breed. Yeah. Until the English got it. And, of course, you know, when the English get a hold of something, they take it down to the genetics. And so Robert Johnson was uh, an early discovery, and everybody was talking about Robert Johnson. And I, I suspect that there was a lot of folks back in the USA that had long lost touch with just his the reference to the great blues thing. Well, he didn't have a lot of recordings, right? He had about 20 recordings. No yeah. one knew what he looked like. He had two photographs. Yeah. Apparently, he's the mystery man. But he's every, the, the whole thing where he was couldn't play guitar. He, every he was getting on everyone's nerves. Nerves. He went away for a year. Came back. All of a sudden, he's Jimi Hendrix of the blues. And he's shredding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, tra sold, sold, or traded. I think he met on the crossroads. As the story goes, I know we went for yeah. The devil was there, and I've I've been there. Tried to tried to trade up. I'm still waiting. <laughs> so is is this just a certain corner where the devil hangs out? Has he got like a little kiosk there or something? Yeah. On the, on the cross, right? The corner of, you know, what is it? It's a couple of highways, right? Yeah, 6149. But they say that it's actually a quarter of a mile off the actual crossing. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. the key, I'll, I think the kiosk would be the, the, the tail. <laughs> Maybe you should put a taco stand there, Billy. Yeah, with some hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, hey. And yeah. You could make some merch. You can have some merch. Why hasn't no one done it? <laughs> I don't know. That seems like a good spot. It's a good day to be talking about it. Tomorrow, LA Taco, the great website, LA Taco, they're going to, the, the, the voting is going to be revealed. Los Angeles Best Taco tomorrow. And then, of course, what a, how timely. Sunday's Cinco de Mayo. What 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 you got to do with this taco? You just like tacos? Yeah, I'm digging tacos. But I think if the devil were to erect the kiosk at the crossroads, yeah, you know the hot sauce would be hotter. It would be crispier. 
Maybe we'll have a maybe have a shootout, taco shootout yeah. at the crossroads. Can I can I reveal a little bit about Billy Gibbons? Please. He loves tacos. He's not saying enough about how much he loves tacos, and he loves uh, you love those uh, not enchiladas. Look, he's brought his own bleeding no, hot sauce. No, he's got a he's got a pocket. Oh, it's peppers. He's got a pocket inside every jacket. That's amazing. With a bottle of hot sauce. Wow. There you go. There you go. So when we're on, I, I just toured with Billy, yeah. and I've known Billy oh, for quite you. a few years, but we went out on the road for a record called The Big Bad Blues. Yeah. And, you know, we're on the bus. We got the bus. We're in Chicago. And we He goes, I think I found the world's greatest hot sauce. Right? So he comes on the bus. He's literally got two five-gallon buckets of this, this hot <laughs> sauce. I'm like, okay. Where are we going to put this? You know, so we got to go out and get a larger cooler to hold the hot sauce. But yeah, amazing. He loves it, don't That's, you, Billy? Yeah, it was. It was at the uh, the big sports uh, complex, Midtown. It's called Midtown Sports yeah. Complex. It's a hotel, a workout center, but the restaurant and the 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 yeah. gal behind the she was putting the burn on. She had this hot sauce recipe that was just yeah. I mean, can you not get it hot enough? Or do you, you like it at a certain level? Can you go higher and higher if oh, it's possible? Well, could, that's too much. Yeah, you can go ridiculous if you if you really have if the penchant to go that direction. I, I like the flavor stuff. Yeah, it's got to be spicy, but, you know, if you lose the flavor, eh, turn around. Yeah. <laughs> turn around and go back. Do you like, uh, have you, do you, what's, your, what, what's your views on uh, curries? Oh, yeah, well, I, I've got a. a we're we're going to bring out a new hot sauce called Bees and Teas. Bees and Teas. Bees and Teas. It's, it's there's a there's a regular, and then there's the, you know, Have Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> call the call nine one one. Yeah. Have Mercy. Have Mercy. <laughs> you have a lovely voice, Bill. Yes, sir. <clears throat> he could do that. radio, don't you think? Totally. <clears throat> Well, uh, yeah, we're in it. We're in it today. Oh, yeah, we are doing it. Because you're kind of a s small f a frame dude, but you have this deep voice. Yeah. Like, I always think fat people have big, deep voices, but it's not the case. Well, yeah, go to the dentist and have some oral surgery, and then they say you can only eat soft foods for two weeks, maybe a month. <laughs> so you'll get, you'll get thin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you had, you had teeth problems? No, I... I Still hanging, I shouldn't say hanging. I'm still solid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, uh, no, my no teeth, hanging dental. <laughs> my teeth are a mess. I, I don't like going. Speaking of Miss Gilly, my lovely sweetheart. Yeah, I know she's out there in Radio Land. She was the one that came up with the opening track of the uh, release that came out earlier this year, "The Big Bad Blues." Uh, Matt and I took. Well, we were instructed. The radio uh, label, the re record company, said, hey, man, we're ga gaining traction. Um, can you put a road show together? And I said, yeah, give us a couple of months. And they said, no, we've already booked it. It starts in 10 days. <laughs> so, Tour dates tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow. Do your other members in ZZ Top <clears throat> live in Texas? They do. They're, they're hard at work in the studio as we speak where, today. Where are they based out of? What city? Down there in Houston. Houston. Yeah. Is that where you're from originally? Yeah. You all was you all pals before you started Easy Top, or, or kind of you just got together? Very interesting question. They were Frank Frank Beard, the man with no beard, uh, Dusty Hill, our fearless bass player. They were working out of Dallas, <laughs> and they were in a group called the American Blues, and uh, at the time pre ZZ Top, it was uh, a little group I had. Called the Moving Sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. Album. Yeah, and uh, we saw each other. There was there was this uh, Saturday morning record teen hop television show. I never got to see him perform live, but I saw him on TV. I guess that counts. Yeah. And they saw they saw us on TV. I don't know. We we finally got it together. We're celebrating five decades together, if you can believe that. Yeah. And you kind of had two two lives really when you first started and then mtv came along then it was a whole nother thing again yeah it was like two you know what i mean before christ after christ <laughs> yeah kind of vibe yeah 
And MTV had a lot to do with it. God, did it ever. The videos with the hands, you know. Yeah, and everybody said, gee whiz, uh, what, what a concept. You're in your own video, but you're you're not really it. You just kind of come and go. <laughs> <laughs> it's the car, the little red car, pretty girls. Got to have yeah. fur guitars. Yeah. And turning, spinning guitars. <laughs> but it also, though, but it also kind of, I mean, put you playing in some big places after that, right? Pri oh, yeah. Prior to that. Yeah. The big turning point after MTV had started gaining traction, the... BBC in England decided to have a 24-hour showing videos all night. And the, by this time, ZZ Top had three videos. Started with Give Me All Your Lovin', followed with Sharp Dressed Man, and then She's Got Legs. Yeah. And they, they played all three back-to-back -back when the pubs were letting out. So yeah. it was like, okay, yeah. who are these guys? Yeah. And now we know them. Yeah, that was a great thing about MTV, 24 hours. Was it in England? Uh, the, is it the same feed in England, Europe, or is it different ca different countries? L later on, it was the same. Later on, it was the same. In the beginning, it was such a curiosity. The BBC yeah. finally perked up and they said, "Hey, this yeah. thing is pretty pretty cool." Yeah. So they 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 did a, a test run, twenty four hours, and yeah. then the next thing, it's like, okay, tune it in. Yeah. Well, we're going to play ZZ Top, Dust in My Broom, Yeah, originally by Robert Johnson. We're here with Billy Gibbons and Matt Sorum. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. That was uh, <coughs> the Yardbirds. Train kept a rolling. And then we had Freddie King going down and ZZ Top. Dust my broom. Beautiful. And we just happened to have Billy Gibbons in the in the house with Matt Sorum. Yeah. I, sh I shanghaied Matt early this morning. I said, come on. We got to go see Jonesy. Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that Yardbirds track. I had forgotten how nice, nicely done that was. Yeah. Who wrote that, you think? Was that a bunch of them, all them dudes, or was that was it even an older song than that? Yeah, back in Memphis, Johnny Burnett That's, trio. Okay, I think it started there. Yeah, fifty five, nineteen fifty five. Yeah. That's when I was born, nineteen fifty five. And then the Yardbirds version appeared in the the film movie Bl Blow, Blow Up. Up. Blow Up. Yeah, the black and white uh, mo about models and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Varushka. Yeah, that was a, that was a cool movie. Yeah, that's I'm right. Yeah, they uh, another they, great version of that particular track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what's going on? Should we give a shout out to our boy Javier? Got to do it, uh, folks. If you're out there driving up the Sunset Boulevard, right at the top of La Cienega, go up to your famous Western wear shop. Anything you need in the way of fine, fine boots, go see Javier at Boot Star. Yeah, right there, Sunset Boulevard. I, I get all my. Uh, cowboy and whatnot boots there he orders them for me you though. like Lucchese right yeah yeah I've, I've actually have you ever been there it's in um, uh, what's, yeah. what's the town by the border there oh. so, uh, El Paso El Paso yeah, yeah they got they got Lucchese I went in there it's a massive place yeah walked around got this you know got the royal treatment and they, they've made me like about five pair of boots never bleed and wear them but Remember when we were in El Paso, Billy? Yeah. We went down to Sonic Ranch. Yeah. The Pecan Ranch right on the border of, of Juarez, right? Yeah. It, it's the largest pecan orchard in the United States. It runs, the property line starts at I-10, Interstate 10. It runs south all the way to the Rio Grande River. It's this corridor of pecan trees. But uh, Tony Ranch, the, the head guy, inherited the place from his granddad and turned it into this beautiful recording studio yeah and so, so it is deluxe the thing about being on the road with billy that's great we got the show right yeah. but then we got the adventure right every day is an adventure with billy gibbons with the hot sauce we just okay <laughs> today we're going to the pecan ranch and we're like what <laughs> it's like today he picks me up yeah. and we go to the pecan ranch and then he goes i know this restaurant down by the rio grande you know we go 
Remember when we ate down there? Cafe Central. <laughs> oh, man. What was the yeah. soup? Green chili soup. Oh, green chili. He goes, I know where the best green chili soup is. Come <laughs> yeah, on. Right? Is. I'm like, what? All, and all the while, he's still in his pajamas. He wears pajamas. Why not? When, up you, to when you're on a tour bus, why not? With a leather jacket. Gotta be oh, comfortable. Yeah. yeah. And th- so I said, hey, there must be something to this. So what did I do? I went out and got myself a set of Derek Rose pajamas. Oh. I'm, I'm disappointed. I thought you'd get Vivian Westwood pajamas. Derek Rose is a whole thing. Have you have you, have you worn them? I don't wear pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much clothes for me. When yeah, I get home, just black skivvies. That's all I wear. Oh, that's just scary. I know. I see your Instagram. It scares me sometimes. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so comfortable with just black briefs. I, I, I love it. No one else around. I hope. Of course, there's no one else around. <laughs> just no. just me and Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back, uh, Derek, Derek Rose from Derek London. Derek Rose, yeah, London, yeah. They started in London, I think. Yeah, remember yeah. I got you a pair? Yeah, they are delicious. He doesn't even want to wear them. They're too nice. Are they like silk or what? They've got every level. I'll send you the link. Yeah? You should try them. Yeah, Derek Rose pajamas. They've got underwear, too. I don't know about black skivvies, but... <laughs> <laughs> black wife ones. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's what we did on the bus, man. We were just like... Yeah, okay, pajamas. We just walked down the street. You put a jacket on, like leather over it. Became a thing. A thing, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, go get some uh, well, San Antonio. We went. We, we actually, I went to the Alamo with Billy Gibbons, which I just thought, wow, <laughs> this is cool. Is it like a tourist thing, the Alamo? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. What? What is it, a building, a wall? What is it? Yeah, both. In fact, they were digging across the street from the Alamo and they had to they had to excavate a sidewalk and in the process they discovered another piece of the Alamo so now they had to close off the street it's now a historic landmark right like an endangered beaver or something yeah <laughs> and then so, you took yeah. me to that hotel where we went to the bar where like Buffalo Bill and all those guys oh uh, the that? yeah at the Menger hotel which is Directly adjacent, uh, next door to the Alamo, you got the Menger Hotel. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders. There. You ever hear about those guys? No. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll talk about it. Probably it's a long story, but yeah, um, yeah. And then we did that. We did Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders bar where they drank. Like that's the kind of stuff we did. I bet there's a taco kiosk there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. We we. Uh, we had a lot of fun together. Yeah, it was cool. I, there's not that's the, that's the uh, for me the best way to travel if you're in a band is in a bus. Yeah, in definitely. a bus. I don't like flying. Just put your junk in the bus and just move. That that's to me is the. We stayed on the bus pretty much the whole time, didn't we, Billy? Yeah, we didn't get rooms really. There's talk about M- Matt and I have been put on notice to wrangle in Austin Hanks, the left-handed guitar player. You can't look at him because it's everything's upside down and backwards yeah but uh yeah they want us to put the road show back on there's a new bus that belongs to taylor swift and we we had it on loan just uh for for a short while but she took the master suite which is usually at the very back of the bus yeah she said no i'm gonna move it to the middle of the bus and the, the bus guy that built out was kind of freaking out but in so doing you you move the bed off the top of the engine you move it to the middle it's kind of more balanced yeah. up there it's quiet how yeah. do you get by to get to the back is there there's a side a, we had uh, smaller bunks like usually you know how where, like, where they have the the, the bunks yeah it'll only be six bunks versus 12. so you could get round the back of it without disturbing yeah. the yeah, person you, in the middle you gotta take the side and i love the bunk I'm in the bunk. It's like a cubicle, and you yeah. got the curtain. And I've been in a bunk with you many times. <laughs> do you remember? Bro, I, I, do. Got, I was awakened. I do. The, the I call it 1989. <laughs> Thirty was, years ago, mate. <laughs> Thirty years ago. Can you believe it? Oh man, that's what's seems... happening to time. Oh, I don't know. It's telescoping. Enjoy yourself. That's all I say. That's what I say, man. <laughs> it goes. Well, it goes both ways. Sometimes it's longer, and sometimes it's telescoping. When you look at the other end of the telescope, everything's yeah. backwards. Time 
is very long when you're having a bad time. Oh. Yeah. If you're having a good time, it moves fast. Yeah. Back uh, on you, the bus. Do you notice as you get a little older, you try to like just forget about having a bad time. Just have a good time. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. I I feel that way. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm just every minute, you know. Yeah. Who got time for that? With those days are gone. Yeah. Yeah. I was awakened off the bus early one morning. Well, middle of the night, whatever. Matt was hollering and screaming, and I kind of peeked out of the bunk, and he was on the floor tussling with the blanket. He was having a, I finally, hey, Matt, are you Sleep. okay? He goes, oh, sorry, man. He said, a nightmare? I, I dreamed I was in a trash compactor. <laughs> <laughs> it was no. close, closing in on no. me. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. God. Yeah, just to be on Taylor Swift's bus was, you know, I just thought about that. Yeah. I said, Billy, you're sleeping where Taylor Swift slept. What do you think about that? It was cool. The yeah, <laughs> Great design. Yeah. Perfect design. And yeah. the, the driver was cool. Remember? WC. WC. He drove for Oprah. Who was the uh, guitarist you said with the, who's backwards? You can't look at him because everything's back to front. Austin Hanks. Our man, Austin. How, he, how old is he? No, not you. Austin Hanks. How old is Austin? God. Like roughly. 40-something. 49. Oh, he's a young dude. Yeah. For, 49er. He's a good guitar player. Got, we got the same birthday, okay. December 16. Ah. But I, that's about as close as... I mean, to, he plays left-handed, which, okay, no, not that big a deal. But the strings are upside down and backwards. Plus, he doesn't, he doesn't tune. <laughs> to, he tuned to the way he was given a guitar. He learned that way. So it's, it's still it's weird. It's, it's all open. Just, we use his capos and stuff. Maybe yeah. you should change Didn't, his name. Uh, did Albert <laughs> King play upside down strings? He or did. St yeah. So backwards and just the high E on top. So the other way around. Yeah. He should change his name to Hank Austin. Hank Austin. <laughs> yeah. It's better. Not a bad idea. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's out there in Palm Springs. I bet he's tuned in now. Yeah. We're, we're going to play The Moving Sidewalks. This is a track called 99th Floor. Did you record this in Texas? Yes. This is this was was this your first band or close to your close, first? Yeah, close to it. This was a kind of like psychedelia kind of era. Yeah, moving sidewalk. We were on the coattails of the 13th floor elevators. Yeah. yeah. 1967, 68. Yeah, 67. Okay. Yeah. We're here on Jonesy's jukebox. And my guest Billy Gibbons. And Matt Sorum, take it away. No hands full. You're listening to Jonesy's jukebox, Carlo West. That was the Kinks all day and all of the night. Then we had the move in sidewalks. That was a track called 99th Floor. That was uh, Mr. Billy Gibbons, one of his early adventures. And uh, <coughs> Billy Gibbons is actually on the box right now with Matt Sorum. Yeah, Steve yeah, Jones man. is carrying the torch for us this morning. Rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. This is yeah. this morning for us rock and rollers. Oh, yeah, we don't get up to a four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we got to, uh, we got to give a shout out to anyone? Well, we know we've we've covered uh, Javier over at Bootstock. Bootstock. Famous, famous on the Sunset Strip. Gilligander, Miss Gilligan, she's up the street. We I'd like to say happy Cinco de Mayo to all of our beautiful Latino people of yeah. Los Angeles. Is that Sunday? Sunday. Uh, I believe it Cinco is. Cinco de Mayo is a couple it's of days, right? Well, well it's, it's Friday now. Okay, Sunday. It's a couple of days would be Sunday. <laughs> yeah. But it is, uh, we were just talking yeah. that yeah. all these great landmarks are slowly dis disappearing. Mm -hmm. Now, apparently, someone the rainbow and the rock sea mm -hmm. is that gonna go is that gonna uh, god i hope keep not. that going i mean i, I don't know I'll re it really that would be a real drag if the rainbow ends oh well we lost mario about a year and a half ago it but he still the, got the family you know he was a good dude oh mario. god man when i came to hollywood he used to give me a bowl of that chicken soup yeah. i was like 17 and yeah go kid you're skinny come in here give me some soup he was a, he was a good dude <laughs> i said can yeah. i have the loaf of bread too I think uh, Lou Adler had 
who owns a bit of the Roxy. Well, that's all, that's all gone. Yep, they sold that, I believe, to Golden Voice, and then the Viper ended up with uh, uh, Harry Morton. Yeah, you know, after Johnny, which is going. Yes, the Viper room. after Johnny Depp left. Yeah, uh, that particular venue, which we all had a lot of fun there. Oh God, we started Neurotic Outsiders in that venue. In Gibbons. the Viper Room, yeah. 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 Well, so it brings, you know, it's like a lot of, like, rock and roll heritage there. A lot of places. A lot of places, they all disappear. But for me, the rainbow would be a real drag. Out yeah. of all the buildings, mm -hmm. you know, the whiskey's still there. Someone tried to get the Troubadour, too, and they, they said, no, forget it, no way. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, come on. The key is owning the land, isn't it? But it seems yeah. weird that you'd think those would be historical sites. There doesn't seem to be any. They don't that. do that here, though, do they? Seems so. Well, they do it in the Alamo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sidewalk. Yeah. That's historical, that sidewalk. Yeah. But no, not the rainbow. Or, you know, it seems that that needs to start happening in L.A. I mean, look. Even they do it in England a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. where we used to rehearse is a place now you can't knock down or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They've got that blue plaque outside yeah and they do that you know they, they they used to do that with all the old guys a guy who used to live here has yeah the plaque outside. yeah we have that in palm springs a lot you'll drive by and you'll see oh that was trini lopez's house is a plaque yeah. and then actually you can get historical tax value for that there's a way to do that and in palm springs where i live the whole community is 1960 and you can't mess with any of the houses right which is cool Maybe they can put a plaque outside my house so I don't have to pay tax. You, you cool. might be able to work that out. Steve Jones is here still. <laughs> uh, In his black skivvies. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's extra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to say that I have a band called Deadland Ritual. We're playing the 28th at the, at the Troubadour. Yeah. 28th for this month? Yeah. I think it's sold out. Yeah, I don't think the Troubadour is going to be there on the 28th, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might move it to, oh, can't go to the Viper Room. That's gone, too. I'm but, coming to that 28th. Are you com are you yeah, coming? Yeah. Oh. Gotta, gotta see now, it. I'm, now I'm nervous. I get more nervous when there's, like, great musicians in the audience. Yeah. Don't you? Uh, no, you don't get nervous about it. I, I mean, yeah, everyone gets nervous, but I just, I forget. I was telling that story the other day when you and me and Iggy played the opening of the Hard Rock hotel yeah and johnny rotten ran down to the front and he couldn't get up on stage and you just i think he kind of looked away and acted like he didn't see him but it was well he said iggy didn't see him <laughs> right he i was, said iggy's blind as a bat when he's on stage yeah and he is and he was dancing around in his skivvies yeah what what am i gonna do <laughs> yeah remember we were playing and he does that a lot though john i was telling that story the other day when when i with a uh, uh, house of everything that blues when that was still going mm-hmm I got up with the pretenders and Rotten made a, a whole thing because I was on the stage. It's a weird thing he's got, like, he don't like, if he ain't center of attention, he don't want anyone else to be the It's like of legendary guitar player lead singer stuff, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Iggy don't and know. his skivvies, yeah. But this guy, he's the lead singer and the guitar player. Yeah. So you don't have to deal with that. Yeah. And, and the other guy, Dusty, sings too, right? Dusty. Dust, yeah, Dusty sings. I love sing, Dusty. Sing. Dusty sings Tush. Beer drinkers and hell raisers. They I, go I, back. I remember when Iggy was was. He said, "Hey man, I, I want to sit in." And he said, "Yeah, where's your where's your clothes? Oh, I've got my skivvies on, man." Yeah. Well, you can you can sit in, but you but just don't sit down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember the night we played Viper and the PA blew up, no. and Iggy climbed the rafters. Yeah. You don't remember? I don't. You were just thinking about the after show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dice game in the back. Something very important, right? Before we go to the Duke. Yeah. What kind of underwear do you wear? Oh, Derek Rose. But what style are they? Uh, they're, what would you call them? No, they're brief, but tighter. They're briefs, but they come down a bit. What do you call that? Like to your... Yeah, yeah. Boxer like boxer briefs. Boxer yeah. briefs, that's what I wear. Tight. Well, now I do. I never used to. I used to, what would you call it, free free ball it? Box, boxes. And then lately, as I've gotten a little oh, nothing. older, I need support. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I wear the briefs. Yeah. That's why I wear the briefs. And you, Mr. Gibbons? I'm sticking with the Hawaiian print. Full, you know, long sleeves, long long pants. Joey Bahama, whatever he's called. Well, actually, uh, back to Derek Rose of London. Yeah. Oh. Those, you know, 
uh, they got the the chest pocket over the heart, but then they got two small pockets at the waistline. So you you're fully ready. You can you can pack it up and go anywhere. <laughs> got to have your leather jacket and cowboy boots from Bootstar. Hot beer. Yeah. Yeah. And hot sauce from uh, <laughs> and hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. Yeah. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was the new Rotic Outsiders a track called Angelina. Another L.A. treasure. Uh, but you can't do nothing about that. Historical. Yeah. Pink, She's still driving around. Pink Corvette, yeah. Wow. That's what that song was about. She used to get free Corvettes, right? Like I, all, I have no idea. Kept, there were always new ones. She had a sugar daddy, I think, for a while. Who used to pay for billboards. the billboards. She had large billboards. Yeah. I saw her, <laughs> I saw her car parked. Uh, she was over in the valley the other day. Really? Yeah. yeah. Still still pink. And, yeah. and when, people, when they see that car parked, they're taking photos of it. Yeah. Everyone takes photos of it. That was pre-Instagram photo opportunity, right? Yeah. It says Angeline on on the, uh, is her license plate. Yeah. Uh, before that, we had the Big Bad Blues, Missing Your Kissing, Billy Gibbons. What's the F for, Fred? Uh, if I t- it's so b- bloody English. You guys, you were Nordic. I didn't get. I'm. I've got the war going on. English dad, Irish mother. Okay. And the F was Billy Formal. <laughs> Formal. My dad was Frederick Royal Gibbons. Wow, that's some regal stuff yeah, going yeah. on there. <laughs> One question before you go. I know you've got to get out of here. Me and Billy Duffy at the thing, at the book soup, we were out the back talking, and we your, your name came up, and we were talking about he couldn't believe that you use really light strings. Is yeah, that true? It's true. I was, but, I was conv- when I started trying to learn this stuff, you know, the list goes B.B. King, Jimmy Reed, Albert Collins, Albert King, Freddie King, on down the line. And I remember I was about 22 and I was sharing a dressing room with B.B. King. And he said, hey, uh, can I play your guitar? And I was kind of shaking and I said, sure, man. And I had these heavy, heavy strings thinking that was the way to get the yeah. big sound. Said, yeah. He handed me the guitar back and he looked at me kind of frowning. He said, why are you working so hard? And I said, well, what, what do you mean? He said, man, you got to get you some light light gauge strength. And that's what started it. Wow. So when B.B. King says, go light, get heavy and go light. <laughs> go light and go right. Mm-hmm. Steve Jones at the wheel here, folks. I I use a 10. What are you, an 8, eight gauge? 7. 7? Yeah. 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 Wow, I'm going to tr- I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah. Jimmy Dunlop, uh, he figured out how to draw seven that's pretty pretty fine it's hair like but they stretch they don't break it's pretty cool light gauge no no dunlop or ernie, ernie ball not ernie ball dunlop dunlop yeah what okay a, what a day huh six um, you sure there's any string there seven seven oh let's see yeah i have to blow it then i <laughs> go six steve go six i'm going five i'll show you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I got you, Gibbons. We're gonna get out with the morons. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're back in. We're gonna Good dive luck. right it's, in. It's moron driving day today. Yeah. yeah, thanks for coming in, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure. And you, Matt. Thanks for coming by. See you, mate. And I'll see you around. All right, all right, right. Take it away, though.